on in, in, in general, temperatures start warming up. What do we see with the snake population? The season begins off with most of the snakes looking to find their first meal, and most of the adult male snakes will end up looking for mates too, both trying to knock out two birds with one stone. But for the most part, most snakes have food on their mind, and they're, uh, they're all looking for a pretty sweet hunting spot this time of year. What about uh, babies? When do the babies start coming out? The babies are usually the first snakes to come out. They're pretty antsy. They are smaller, so they have a lower body fat uh, compared to the adults, so they need to find their first meal sooner. So usually, I start seeing the babies out cruising around a few weeks to even a month before the adults. Um, but the babies we see now are all born in the late summer and early fall, so they'll, they'll all be yearlings by the time this fall rolls in. And we had, obviously, this is our second dry year. I know one of the impacts, especially with exceptional drought, is the wildlife impacts start changing where they look for food, where they look for water, and where they start to set up their homes. Yeah, they, uh, the longer the drought goes on, they may start to travel less and less, but that's in places away from any humans in areas where the snakes border neighborhoods or you know, business parks, they might feel more willing to move closer to irrigation and whatnot to hunt or simply find a cooler environment to spend the summer. Um, but it does, it takes some time, honestly, for drought to start affecting most of the adult snakes. Uh, but then again, I guess we're already we're two or three years into the drought now. So effects do start to become noticeable about three years in. Uh, from what I remember last time. And you start to see skinnier and skinnier snakes just because um, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, they're gonna hunker down and wait for food to come to them, but that's not always a guarantee. So you, you start to see body weight drops uh, the further and further we go. Will they start to move towards more highly populated areas, maybe residential areas where there may be more irrigation? Yeah, so most of the snakes who do border human habitat areas, uh, you know, neighborhoods and whatnot, they may end up in backyards and whatnot more, especially if there is good irrigation. Um, you know, irrigate, uh, for example, air conditioner units that have a drip, uh, you know, as it's running all day, sometimes those spots become more and more interesting, especially the hotter it gets, you tend to find snakes getting around and under AC units, uh, generally in an outdoor environment. So if it's just like a grassy surface you're watering, they, they don't like to be exposed too much. So you're, you won't really find them a whole lot in grass and whatnot itself, but you know, in and around irrigated lawns and whatnot, if you have brushy stuff that they can get under to protect themselves visually and from the heat, then you very well could see them a, a bit more often than you would a normal year. Okay, so let's talk about snakes in water. <laughs> there was one spotted, it was up towards Reading, it was Whiskey Town Lake. But uh, a couple of years ago, we had one in Folsom Lake that got all sorts of people going crazy. I have to tell you, I'm an open water swimmer. So that kind of sent chills up my spine a bit. I'm not a snake person. Uh, how, how does it happen that we're getting, we might get snakes in the water? Most of the time, it's when the snake is trying to travel from point A to point B or simply get a drink. Maybe if a snake, you know, crawls down towards the beach at, you know, Folsom Lake, for example. And by the time it finally gets down there to maybe get, grab a drink or, you know, maybe it's going to hunker down somewhere along the shore for the day. If it gets spooked by all the activity, you know, if there's a bunch of people barbecuing or hanging out on the beach, it might get spooked out of its hiding spot and be a lot more prone to swimming to try to get away from all the activity. Um, and you know, in addition to that, given the lake is so low and most of our lakes are, are pretty low at this point, it's not too far of a stretch to swim across it. Snakes, rattlesnakes especially, do swim pretty well and they do travel a lot. They're pretty transient animals. So if, you know, a snake wanted to get to the other side of the lake now, it's as easy as it gets, honestly. And swimming, you know, a few hundred feet or meters is certainly doable for a snake who really wants to do it. So do they really go up to people in the water or are they trying to avoid you in the water? What, what's the situation there? 
So they wouldn't necessarily be going after people, though if a snake does swim a few hundred feet, it's going to get tired just like you know any normal person would be who's not an Olympic swimmer. He's probably going to want to take a break. And usually when the water level is higher, there's plenty of you know tree debris in the water. But when it's low now, most of that tree debris is left up pretty high where the, the water is, is normally. So they're a lot more prone to maybe getting up onto a boat or if you're out, you know, uh, on a floaty device or something like that. If Mr. Snake sees that, then, you know, quite honestly, it's entirely possible for him to think it's a little island to take a break. Um, if, if that happens, what should we do? If you see a snake swimming towards you, I would just say paddle the other direction. As long as Mr. Snake, as long as you have distance between you and the snake and you can see exactly where he is, you see him swimming your way, just paddle the opposite direction. He'll get the picture that that island he's trying to get to keeps getting further and further away, and he'll probably change his plan and go somewhere else instead of follow you around. Are they fast? They can swim pretty quick. Like a lot of the time when they plop into a pool, if they really want to, they could swim across the pool, you know, just as fast as the person wanted to. I wouldn't say they swim faster than the person, but they they can they could probably keep up with you if they really wanted to but you know if you're moving around trying to get away and they see all that movement they're gonna they're gonna figure that's just too much too much to handle they don't want to go uh, you know go onto an island that has suddenly started moving around they're not a fan of all that uh, movement and whatnot and what type of snakes might we see moving into water are, are, are we mostly in rattlesnake territory or what do we mostly see here? Mm. Most of the time, it's going to be like gopher snakes and garter snakes who are aquatic. King snakes will swim too. I would say it's a lot more likely to find a gopher snake or a, or a garter snake, you know, cruising around in the water. But, um, you know, they, they're all very capable of swimming. And if they want to get to a spot that requires swimming, they certainly will. And when do we see peak snake season around here? I know once the temperatures start to get warmer, they're coming out like you had mentioned for food and things of that nature. Usually spring is a pretty busy time just because all of the snakes have the same thing on their mind, usually food or a mate if they're an adult snake. Um, but, you know, once we get past spring, the activity levels kind of hit a point where they stay pretty steady throughout the season. Um, they're going to start hunkering down in cooler places just like people will. You know, no one wants to be out doing stuff out in the heat. So, uh, you know, you're, you'll find them more in shaded patios and anywhere where it's cooler, you know, irrigation again can sometimes lower the temperature of, a, of an area quite a bit, depending on what time people are watering. Um, but uh, but I would say the busiest time is definitely springtime, like mid to late spring is pretty, is pretty crazy. And if for those people that are going to be doing some hiking, some running on some trails that might have some rocky spots or some hidden brush, well, how can we best protect ourselves from both being a threat to the snakes, because obviously we may be going into their environment or being harmed by one as well. So if you're out hiking, just make sure you're wearing some decent hiking boots. Most bites, if they happen, it's usually when you step on a snake. And usually if you step on the snake, it's gonna bite very close to where you're making contact with it, which is probably just you know the bottom of your foot. So as long as you're wearing shoes that cover your foot, that should do the trick pretty well. And then as you're hiking along, if you get to places where uh, you know, there is rocks and stuff on the trail or other debris. You ideally want to step onto each of these things. You, know, you want to step on the rocks, you want to step on the logs. You don't want to walk around them because that's generally where the snakes are going to be. They're usually hunkered down under solid objects to shade themselves as well from, from the heat while we're all out there, you know, hiking through. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, as long as you're wearing the proper footwear and you, you don't step around solid objects that you don't know what lurks under, that should do you in and keep you safe as you're you know, enjoying your afternoon. Okay, awesome. Is there anything that I didn't cover or ask you that you wanted to pass along? Um, I think really that covers most of the bases. I, I mean, you know, the usual thing I always say is, Snakes aren't looking for any trouble. They're looking for comfortable places to spend the day, just like people are. The hotter it gets, the more likely they are to be trending towards shady areas. It's not that they're gonna come after you or mess with you. It's just you know they're they're very um, they're very sensitive beings, just like us. So you know if it's hot or you know if there's anything else going on, they're they're gonna try to be comfortable just like us. And 
just because they want to be comfortable doesn't mean it's going to cause any problems to you directly. And so they wouldn't be seeking water for relief from the heat. That is not their purpose like humans. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not that they're directly looking for water. Uh, usually they, di they, they digest whatever it is they're eating and then they stay hydrated that way. It takes a considerable amount of time drought wise for it to start affecting them um, to the point where they might uh, specifically want to go out of the way to get a drink of water. Um, it's not unheard of, but, uh, but generally speaking, it's going to be indirectly strong in the sinks, either for, you know, relief from the heat with uh, lower temperatures and well irrigated areas, or if they are uh, looking for a place with more rodent activity, which certainly does come with well irrigated areas. And uh, that definitely increases the odds of snakes realizing that hunting is a lot easier in uh, well irrigated areas compared to out in the dry brush as it is now. Okay, so it's not like we're going to start seeing more snakes in the water. This was probably just a snake trying to get from point A to point B, getting some food. Exactly. It, it happens quite often. Like, it, I would say snakes crossing the water happens a lot more often than most people think. It's just time and place. You know, if you're in the spot where a snake's trying to cross, you know, you're going to end up seeing it. And because there are so many people now flocking to all of our lakes and whatnot, now the pandemic's kind of winding down. People are trying to get back to normal life. It wouldn't surprise me if there's an uptick in encounters being reported simply because there are more people out at that place at that time. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much.